you'll know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday. Warning. The following podcast might be too truthful for most liberals. Listener discretion is therefore advised. Welcome to the Tea Party Power Hour. I am your host, Mark Gillard. Today is a very special day indeed, as we have with us Mr. Cash Patel. I'm sure all of you are familiar with him, but you may not be familiar with his extensive resume. Cash was the chief of staff to the Department of Defense, where he oversaw 3 million plus employees, a $740 billion budget, that's billion with a B, and $2 trillion in assets. He also served as the deputy assistant to the president and senior director for counterterrorism on the National Security Council. Mr. Patel served as the National Security Advisor and Senior Counsel for the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, and he's here today to talk to us about his brand new book that took a lawsuit to get out called Government Gangsters. Cash, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me on the show, and I hope I do some of that intro justice with our conversation here. (laughs) Uh, well, that's all the time we have. I used it all with the intro. <laughs> all right, <man. laughs> no, it, it, I, I wanted to get the whole thing out there. In fact, I actually left off that you were once a public defender, which I think is a very important part of who you are. So we'll, we'll add that to the list. You know, <laughs> this book could have easily been called Fly on the Wall of History. I mean, for, no, for a guy that claims he didn't make great grades in law school and, you know, started out as a public defender, I mean, you were part of American history at very key times, and you could also answer a lot of questions regarding these things that are being thrown at at Donald Trump, these various accusations, because you were actually there and you know what happened. But let's talk about the thing that I think you will certainly go down in history for, and that is you busted the Russian collusion investigation. (laughs) wide open. I mean, we all kind of joked, you know, just like Marsha, 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 there was Russia, 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 but (laughs) you were the one who found out who funded this thing, what it was really all about, and how it was basically just full of nonsense. But I'll let you tell the story. How is it that you became involved in investigating this? And tell us what you learned through that investigation. Yeah, look, you know, my government career has been completely unplanned and, you know, I've been blessed. If you want to make God laugh, just tell them your plan. They've been laughing for a long time, but I've been, I've enjoyed the ride and, you know, I've always put the mission first in service to this country as do so many other Americans. But, you know, Russiagate, talk about me being a public defender and trying cases and running investigations all over the world. I never thought that would come in handy at the United States Congress, but uh, met Devin, this guy named Devin Nunes on a one-off. Didn't even know who he was. I'm not even going to lie about it. <laughs> and um, he's like, oh, so you're a public defender. So you're a prosecutor. You did intel time at JSOC with special forces. You know, we got this Russiagate thing. Why don't you come run this for us? And I said, that sounds like a terrible idea. And it's all in the book, Government Gangsters, the backstory. We have some fun because we want to just not just give you the raw meat, but we want to give you the lives of the people and that they're real people and that they're funny and that they're smart, and that they're humorous, and that they're all for the American mission. And, you know, when we unraveled Russiagate, even me, a guy who used the FISA court to chase terrorists lawfully, did not expect the DOJ and FBI to combine forces with the Democratic Party to rig an election and stonewall a presidential campaign by buying foreign bogus intelligence and then selling it to the American people as true, and worse off, lying to a federal court just to make that play happen. And not once, not twice, not thrice, four times into Donald Trump's presidency, that warrant was signed off on by a Republican, Rod Rosenstein and Chris Ray, government gangsters of the first order. And they're all listed in the back of my book alphabetically by name and title. I wanted the world to know how they fail to serve our country and how they destroyed our system of justice and everywhere else. And, 
you know, that's what that sort of just put it on the map, the deep state, Russiagate. It used to be a right wing conspiracy. And, you know, now we know it's not. We put the truth out. That was the one thing Devin and I wanted to do. And we continue to do it to this day. And we see the deep states, you know, they're on Russiagate 27.0. Whether it's the 14th Amendment, the 51 Intel letter, Hunter Biden's laptop, Ukraine impeachment one, two, they are in it to do one thing, take over the swamp, make sure D.C. pays them and to silence conservative voices. And that's the point of government gangsters. You now have the roadmap, as Donald Trump calls it, to 2024. So join the fight, order a copy, governmentgangsters.com. I even heard a vicious rumor that Barnes and Nobles even put it on its top shelf. I think some liberals probably going to get fired for that one. <laughs> I tell you what, I'll I'll go there tonight, and if, if it's not on the top shelf, I'll put it there. I love doing stuff like that. Now, let's talk about Crossfire Hurricane. What, mm -hmm. if anything, was it predicated upon? Nothing. That, and that's the shocking part. When when you run a FISA, and just for the audience, that's, you know, you can deep run, I go deep into the weeds and government gangsters, but that's just a search warrant. It's a national security search warrant. So you would think there would be more corrections, more investigations, more steps to make sure what you have is the truth. But when you have guys like Comey and McCabe, Strzok, the lovebirds, who are lying about their political partisan hackery while committing adultery and running the most sensitive counterintelligence investigation in modern history, this is who was in charge of it. You expect that in a banana republic. But no, this was 2016, the FBI in the United States of America. And they jammed this stuff through. And the people at the DOJ who are supposed to be like me and check their work they were in on it with them. John Carlin, Mary McCord, Lisa Monaco, all these people are now back in power at the DOJ. And that's another mission of government gangsters. It's a cyclical process. It's not like it's a one-off. They come in and out of government, and their mission is to protect themselves, pad their wallets, and make sure they get their golden parachutes. And you can read the stories about Mark Esper, Gina Haspel, who launched Russiagate as CIA station chief and later became director of the CIA. No one's called her to task for allowing that bogus, fraudulent foreign operation against an American president. She was rewarded for it by the deep state. That's what we're up against. Well, when you were listing off all the things that they're there to do, including pad their pockets, there was one thing I didn't hear. You didn't say anything about them serving the American people. <laughs> well, you know, I laugh at it now, but that's the sad tragedy of it all. What happened to the mission? What happened to serving our country? and saying that service comes first. They don't care. They want their paydays. You know where Rod Rosenstein and Gina Haspel currently work? You can't make this stuff up. At Chris Ray's old law firm, they figure salaries. The three architects of Russiagate are all making money off of each other. That's wow. not a coincidence. Of course That's not. That's the type of stuff you learn in Government Gangsters. The book was full of very interesting information. It's one of those books that you can't put down I have a lot of authors on the show. It's hard to read all the books, but I did read yours in its entirety because the, the pages. Oh, wow. Thank you. The, you're welcome. The pages. <laughs> you're the one. You're the first guy. It just launched today. So look at, look at that. I love that. Well, I got an advanced copy. So, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know how that works. But yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool. And what's really cool about it is I don't talk about it. I don't say what's in it, but I can just tell people, oh, yeah, Government Gangsters is, is a great book. And they're kind of like, it's not out yet. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> it's fun. Well, I'm it's, honored that you got it. Oh, uh, well, I, I got it and I loved it and I read it. And like I said, the pages turned themselves. And by the way, I'm, this is kind of an off one off question, but I have met so many liberals cash mm -hmm. who to this day will tell you that they believe that Trump won in 2016 because the Trump mm -hmm. campaign colluded with Russia. Doesn't matter what the mm -hmm. Mueller report says. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what all mm -hmm. the release documents have to say. They still believe that, including people who work in national television. No, and that's part of the mission of Government Gangsters is we put the receipts, the documents from January 6th, the Nunes memo, the documents from Bowser and Pelosi that they don't want you to read because our part of our mission is to educate the American people to say this is the truth. And that's the reason they believe that is because they were listening to the wrong media outlets and got bamboozled and lied to. And that's our mission is to educate them, not to say I told you so, but to say, hey, you now know that this was rigged. You know they did it again, and they're going to do it again. Do you care about saving our country and leaving it better for our kids? Read this book, Government Gangsters. Read on, on censorship free, free speech platforms like Truth Social and understand the truth and understand how the FBI and DOJ are working with corrupt social media and the media in the mainstream to put out a false narrative yet again. And if you don't think they're working on it, 
you're you're then they're they're a lost cause. But I believe there's enough of this country work soon. Well, okay. First of all, we're not allowed to say "I told you so." I'll, I'll change. I'll change <laughs> I will change that immediately. I'll start saying we want to educate you. I, now, yeah, there you go. I said that you could have called this book fly on the wall of history not only were you there to bust the russian and collusion investigation wide open you are also the one person who can look someone in the eye or the camera straight on and say that you know for a fact that donald trump declassified those documents before they were mm-hmm. sent to mar-a-lago yeah. can you tell us about that because the democrats keep saying well what did he do wave a magic wand i mean he doesn't just get to wave a wand and say i hereby declassify you How did he do it? So tell us, how was it done? Well, actually, he does. Any commander in chief under the authority of the law can declassify any document, statement, recording, movie, what have you, by simply saying so. That is a rule of law as codified in the Office of Director of National Intelligence's creation. And he is the universal orbiter of classifying information. And so if they want to disagree with that, then that's because they're listening to fake news who trumped up these stories to say, oh, he never did it. I was there, he did it, and the deep state government gangsters like Pat Cipollone, who I name in my book, who was Trump's White House counsel, and Bill Barr and others, stonewalled those declassification requests and used the bureaucracy to reverse a commander-in-chief's lawful order. That's what happened. That's the level they go to, and then they get the media to cover for them and make it out as if we're like the criminal villains. So that's what we got to get hard facts out on to uh, educate the public that they are doing it again. They did it before, and unless you want it to ruin your child's future, you got to come on board with the uh, mission-first approach here. So as far as these classified documents are, are concerned, you worked specifically on some of the Russia Gate documents mm-hmm. that they had, and I, I'm guessing Hillary Clinton's yeah. you know, situation. So you know for a fact that those documents were declassified because you're the one who was working to get them declassified. So I, I'm, I have to ask, if a president has that unquestionable authority, why did you have to go through these other entities within the government in order to get those documents declassified? Well, well, we didn't because we ran out of time because they use those other entities to reverse course and stonewall it, wow. slow roll it. And that's the problem. When That's what they did, not just with the documents, just with anything that the president wanted to achieve. And that's what we're trying to educate. You know, if, if a prior president said it, it was just Roger that, mission done. But right. for some reason, they changed the rules uh, when, our, when, you know, when 45 came in. So that's what I want to tell people about. this two-tier system of justice, which is a central tenet of government gangsters. So, it exists not just in the courts, but in the administrative state. You mentioned a previous president. I assume that might have been a reference to one William <laughs> Jefferson Clinton. I mean, Clinton had tapes in his sock drawer. One, yeah. one of his... One of his people actually s- tried to sneak files out by stuffing them in, in his pants. Hillary had yeah. classified emails on her server. She deleted 33,000 uh-huh. emails on her server. Then we've got Comey, who leaked classified information to his, law and, uh, to his lawyer, Professor Buddy, who then leaked it to the media. So there's been a lot of document leaking going on, and the only one anybody seems interested in is Donald Trump because he uh-huh. took, a person who actually had the authority to declassify these documents actually possessed these documents. So, And then you take a look at, oh, let's look at Joe Biden. He has stuff going back to when he was a senator, and I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a lawyer, senators don't have the ability to cla- declassify documents. <laughs> they do not. Okay. Um, as I said, it's only one person that does. And the reason that the deep state came after him rose up is because he – took out their entrenchment in D.C. He threatened their livelihoods, and he threatened and did. Donald Trump exposed their corruption and lies, um, whether it's uh, at the FBI, DOJ, DOD, NSA, CIA, through the acts that these corrupt actors were part of for all these years. He, he also ended the forever war, secured the border, took on Russia, China, and Iran, like they said they would, only he accomplished it. So he showed this entire class of people who have been working for themselves and helping line their own pockets that service to the American people is possible. And they hated him for it. Everything that's happening to Trump right now, all these bogus indictments, he continues to be smeared in the press daily. Is this just vengeance toward Donald Trump or is this a message <laughs> to the rest of us? Don't ever send us well, an outsider again. This is what will happen. 
it's a combination of the two. Of course, he's the juggernaut of justice leading that charge. And it's a warning to the rest of us. Like, look, I was unlawfully surveilled. And I talk about it in my book, I'm against this. When I was running Russiagate, it, I didn't find out until five years later, Rod Rosenstein and Chris Ray illegally surveilled me and, 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 and went after my records. And I just filed a lawsuit last week against those two guys. And you could read about that on Truth Social. Yeah, was, uh, that, about that, we the, was that about the Google records? Yeah, and more. Exactly. These guys, they, they'll use the systems of justice and they will weaponize and politicize it against their enemies. We were exposing their corruption. So they, they the architects of Russiagate, came after us with the same uh, modus operandi to kneecap us. And that's what they want you to fear. It's not only they're going to come after you legally, they're going to come after you in the media. They're going to vilify you. They're going to put out defam defamatory statements, which is why I'm suing Politico and New York Times and CNN. And we got to fight back. And that's the thing. We also have to give the people a basis to have that ability to fight back, which is why I started the Cash Foundation. And I talk about how that in the book. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're helping tons of people. We're giving away tons of money. And, and that's the whole point. We just can't be scared. You're not alone. We got to show people that we have at least 80 million plus people that care about you here. What were they hoping to find your Google records that one day you Googled how to instigate an insurrection or? Probably. Yeah. Or probably the time I emailed, you know, Xi Jinping or asked the, you know, the uh, fat man in DPRK <laughs> for the nuclear codes. But maybe I hit that one too well, you know. Oh my gosh, the nuclear codes! I still remember Bill yeah. Clinton losing those. Yeah, yeah. But yeah exactly. Let's let's uh, let's talk about a couple of phone calls. All right, let's first talk about the <laughs> the Ukraine phone call. You yeah. know, I have read the transcript of that phone call. I see nothing wrong with it. Yet, when you hear the liberal interpretation of uh -huh. that phone call, they say that Trump was threatening to withhold aid money from Ukraine if they didn't quote unquote manufacture some evidence against Joe Biden. So Yeah. Well that they apart, do please. that that's just an example of they level you with charges of things that never happened, but they are doing themselves. You're right. The phone call transcripts are available to the world. But they didn't care. Just like they didn't care about the fifty one Intel letter. They just wanted the headlines. They knew the media would run with it. And now we know the true story that the only person that threatened a Ukrainian prosecutor with a billion dollar leverage was the current commander in chief. And so we know, and now America knows that uh, the truth was exposed, but what the mainstream media will do with these government gangsters is they'll come up with their next iteration. They'll be like, oh, no one cares about that anymore. We're talking about the 14th Amendment now. We're talking about, you know, mm -hmm. removal of this, you know, this villain. And, and they'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, we should look at the new shiny object, not the one that they they rip the wax off of and exposed of. And that's what they do. Whether it's that phone call or any other one, they are always guilty of the of what they level charge at us against. They're always projecting. I think that's their favorite defense mechanism. Going back to the Ukraine phone call and the Ukraine itself, whenever you talk about Shokin being fired, and you imply that, well, that's because he was going after Burisma and Hunter Biden was on the board of Burisma. What liberals always come back with is everybody wanted that guy fired. Right, right. He was, no, he, no. He wasn't Where's investigating, the evidence? He wasn't investigating evidence? corruption. Right, right. And they always say, what evidence? No, the $3 million from one bank account to yours is not evidence. The phone calls are not evidence. The lunch um, at Cafe Milano with a former vice president whose son had just reached three and a half million dollars for the mayor of Moscow when he had dinner with his wife, not evidence. This is what criminals do. They don't videotape their own robbery. They hide, they use shell games and they cover up their fraud. And if it were anyone else that was at the receiving end of the target list, that would have been a slam dunk case. But this is why the two tier system of justice is destroying not just the judicial process, but it's also creates an alternate reality for the mainstream media to make millions of dollars on. Sticking with the Ukraine phone call, or sticking with Ukraine, rather, for just a minute, Comer is saying that he's got the receipts, that Joe Biden mm. and Hunter Biden each received $5 million from Ukraine. It was laundered through 10 different banks and 20 different shell companies. And frankly, I, I believe he has those receipts. You tell me, do you think he has the receipts? And if so, what does that have to do with us tinkling away 150 billion dollars in ukraine right now 
Yeah, exactly. I think he's got him, and I think the American people need to see him more importantly. That's the purpose of constitutional oversight, is to use that authority to get the information out to the American public, especially when you have a bankrupt DOJ and FBI. In this Congress, they don't understand why they won't subpoena the main characters involved and why they won't go after the government gangsters that are withholding the documentation under congressional subpoena. Um, take a playbook out of what Devin and I did during Russiagate. We took some of their funds, and all the documents were exposed the next day. I don't know why this majority won't come in and do it, but that's what they need to do. And we're going to have to take a quick break to do a little business with America, but we will be back with Cash Patel in just a minute. We all know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday at Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving we offer industrial grade supplies for every industry with same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders all backed by real people ready to help so you can get the right answers and products right when you need them call click Granger.com or just stop by Granger for the ones who get it done Let's talk about the January 6th so-called insurrection. <laughs> what? Oh, you got another six hours? <laughs> no, well, I've got all the time you want. I don't yeah. think you have the time. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, well, you know, I was chief of staff at DOD, and this is probably one of the reasons they didn't want the book out. And the Biden administration spent 10 months blocking it. I put the Nancy Pelosi Capitol Police timeline in the back. I put Mayor Bowser's letter in the back. I put the DOD timeline and all the other government documents that showed Donald J. Trump Days before January 6th, authorized the National Guard up to 20,000, and Nancy Pelosi and Mayor Bowser refused that request. Why is that important, your viewership might be asking? Because the law of commands of commander-in-chief can only authorize National Guard, and it cannot be deployed until a request is made by the governing authority, i.e. the mayor of D.C. or the head of the Capitol Police, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House. And just like Russiagate, they pushed this false narrative that Donald Trump didn't do anything. When he was the only one that preemptively act and these other two characters, these other two government gangsters, politicized the situation so they could have this insurrection narrative, which we're still talking about to this day. And when the DOJ had a chance to charge Donald Trump with said insurrection, they didn't because he did not commit it. And even this corrupt DOJ knows it, but they wanted the narrative out there in the mainstream media. And that's what's so important about government gangsters in January 6th. It's all in there. Gee, Cash, that's not the version I got from Liz Cheney. <laughs> well, my deposition's out there. I was the first guy subpoenaed by the January 6th committee. It cost me a quarter million dollars. Oh, no. That deposition's now public. And you know which deposition they made public last? Mine. First subpoena, last deposition they made public because they didn't want the truth out there. I had no problem going in there and telling them the truth. That's part of your job as a former civil servant. And these people wanted nothing to do with the truth. Liz Cheney, I think, stayed for like 10 minutes of my deposition, got up and left because she knew I was right. And she would later confirm on national TV that President Trump lawfully acted in her slip up on national TV because even she knows when her dad authorized the National Guard, um, that that was the only step he could take was the authorization of it. He could not deploy it. That would have been illegal. Yeah, I think the version she told on television was that Donald Trump refused to deploy the National yes. Guard. Yes, he cannot to... deploy him. Yeah, yeah exactly. Law, you're you're spot you on. In the book. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about Another crossfire, not crossfire hurricane, but crossfire razor. A lot of people have been hurt mm. as the left yeah. attempts to go after Trump. I can't think of anybody that's been hurt. Well, I guess I can, but certainly General Flynn, one of the people the most hurt about this. Give us a rundown on what James Comey did to General Flynn. 
Well, that's what they wanted to do. You know, and I personally know Mike Flynn. I talk about him in my book. He's a great American. And people have to remember, Mike, you know, was about to be in the Democratic Obama administration, but couldn't stand the corruption of the deep state and just cared about the mission. And we need more guys like that. And what they did to him for exposing fraudulent intelligence endeavors is they law unlawfully leaked his name. And I've been at the receiving end of this, these personal attacks myself. And then they lied about him in the media. And then they forced him to resign. And they forced him to spend millions of dollars on attorney's fees for things he should never have to defend. That's what they do to you. But my friend Lee Smith, who wrote The Plot Against the President, great book and even an even better movie that everybody should watch because it is now more relevant than ever. There's a reason it was the number one documentary in America, The Plot Against the President, is because it, it breaks apart the things that happened to Mike Flynn and how the deep state will come after you but how the mission is more important than their personal attacks. And I'm glad General Flynn is still in the fight. And we go into it in depth in Government Gangsters on what they did to him, but more importantly, how to take these people out so they never do it to anyone ever again. Well, let's talk a little bit about what they did do to him. I mean, Comey, and you referenced it in the book, there's that interview he was doing on television when mm -hmm. the, he was asked, you know, how were you able to... How were these FBI agents just able to go into the White House and yeah. get this interview? And he very smugly said, I sent them. And then the audience cracks yeah. up laughing like a bunch of idiots Yeah, that Democrats typically are. And so to lay the groundwork for the audience right now, the FBI had a transcript of mm -hmm. a phone call that Flynn had made with Russian ambassador Kislyak and mm -hmm. in that conversation they discussed various things but there was obviously nothing illegal in that conversation or they just would have charged him with the transcript in their hand but exactly in but instead they decide and this this is found and this is thanks to you this is found in an FBI notes they were trying to decide before they went there to question him or are we just trying to get him to lie so we can prosecute him or get him fired? Yeah. So they didn't I'm have anything in the transcript. Right. And the way that works mm -hmm. is you go in there and they say, "Do you talk? did you talk about this? And to the best of your ability, you go, no, I, I don't think I did. You're lying. You do remember talking yeah. about that. And I actually know Jerome Corsi pretty well. And he mm -hmm. was telling me that when he was questioned by the Mueller team, it was the same type thing, man. They were going back years on emails. You know, on this day, did you receive an email from somebody yeah. stating this? Nobody remembers that kind of crap, including the people no, who work for the FBI. No, and what they did to Flynn is a perfect example of what I talk about in my book, is they withheld evidence of innocence. And it wasn't until years later when I became Deputy Director of National Intelligence, we forced the FBI to undeclassify this evidence of innocence, this basis that they should never have prosecuted him for, just like they should never have prosecuted the case in Russiagate. And we caught him. But it took us two years to get it out. And by then, the damage had been done to him personally, but it wasn't done to him physically or mentally because he withstood it all. But that's what they do. They lie. And now we know we caught them lying. But that's what it took us at the top of the intel ladder to force Chris Ray's FBI to expose this corruption that they had, quote unquote, rejected for government security purposes. And now we know that's just another corruption cover up scandal. That's what I talk about. You know, we got to stop over utilizing government censorship in redaction to cover up corruption. That's what these government gangsters are so good at. And part and, of the, um, I'm sorry, I was going to say, sorry. part of the information no, okay. that you that you exposed is that, again, the FBI was talking about how they were going to trick him into lying before they even did the interview. Even with that, the two people that were in the room, including Peter Strzok, of all people, were said that they didn't think that he lied. And the mm -hmm. 302 forms, which uh, I had an FBI agent on a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. he said they're supposed to be filled out within five days. Took yeah. much longer than that to fill out, and the person who did the main writing or the editing was Strzok's lover, Lisa Page, who mm -hmm. wasn't even in the room and had no business whatsoever working on Flynn's 302. So the, the whole thing just reeks of corruption and a setup of General Flynn. Yeah, and this is what happens when you let justice become weaponized and politicized. You, you get the crime, and then you find the person you want to jam with it even though he didn't do it, like Flynn and like so many others that they've prosecuted baselessly and investigated and surveilled uh, baselessly 
um, from Russiagate on. That's the criminality of a two-tier system of justice. We caught them. We got their text messages out when we ran Russiagate. And we ran into stonewall after stonewalling after stonewalling because they didn't want the evidence out. They wanted it stale. And they wanted the American public to have moved on to the next corruption cover-up scandal. And that's why I put it all in one place in Government Gangsters. That's the mission. The mission has always been getting the truth out and fixing our corrupt system of justice, our DOD, our intel communities, and most of all, obliterating um, the deep state. But we can't do it without your viewership. And, uh, you know, I got to leave it there. I'm sorry, I got to run. Okay. But uh, I appreciate the time, and um, I hope we can do this soon. And everybody goes and gets Government Gangsters at governmentgangsters.com. It's released today. Donald Trump just blasted the truth out about it. I'm humbled and honored by his support, and I think everybody's going to enjoy it. They might be saddened by it. They might uh, tear up and cry a little, but I think they're going to have a smile on their face at the end, it's knowing a, it's, that we can we can obliterate them. It's a real eye opener, and I can tell you that it arms people, arms conservatives with the truth. Barack Obama said that he wanted people to get in their relative's face during the holidays. Well, mm -hmm. if any liberal tries to get in the face of some conservative who's read this book, they're going to wish they hadn't done it because this thing is <laughs> as, this thing is as full of facts as it gets. Let's not forget you've got the podcast going on at, I believe, the Epic Times. And you've got, what What are the different, you've got something with cash. What is that website? The Cash Foundation, thecashfoundation.com. We've given away over uh, $200,000 to veterans, active duty service members, whistleblowers, anyone in need, go to thecashfoundation.com. We're finding the funds to help you because you've been persecuted baselessly or just are someone in need. It's not a Democrat or Republican thing. That's the most important mission I got right now. I know you've, got, you can, I know you've got to go. I just want to say thank you for being here. I uh, hope we can do it again sometime. I still have a lot of questions from reading the book. And, you know, best of luck to you, and thank you for being one of the people who's not afraid to tell the truth. Thanks so much, and we'll definitely do this again soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Cash. Bye-bye. Bye. I want to thank everybody for being here today and remind everyone that if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, just text T, that's T-E-A, as in taxed enough already, as in Tea Party Power Hour, tax, excuse me, text T to 44144. Also, don't forget, Christmas will be here before you know it. We have some of the most amazing looking Trump silver coins on our website. Just go to TeaPartyPowerHour.com, click on the Trump coin page, and you're going to see a very large selection of 99.9% .9 silver Trump coins. They are the perfect gift for the Trump supporter on your list, the MAGA person on your list. Frankly, anybody who appreciates what Donald Trump has tried to do for this country. They make great stocking stuffers. And that's it for now. We look forward to seeing you next time when our guest will be Liz Wheeler of the Liz Wheeler Show. I'm sure you all remember her from the One American Network. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. You've been listening to the Tea Party Power Hour with Mark Gillard. We all know a guy who only occasionally shaves for big occasions, and it's because that occasional shave really hurts. It's the time of year for big occasions, and yet there he is, suffering with that cheap drugstore razor. Let's help him out. Henson Shaving's line of razors, built with aerospace precision, deliver a smooth shave your dad, brother, and even son can enjoy, eventually. With replacement blades just 10 cents each, you'll buy it once, and they'll use it for life. How's that for the perfect gift? Celebrate with 100 free blades on your first purchase, and no subscription headaches. HensonShaving.com slash holiday monetizing digital services since 2004 boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone awg where innovation meets monetization